Okay, well, I have a, a few other stories to discuss. Um, I think it'd be good for us to go to the interview that was done with the Israeli professor, historian. Um, let's see, let me pull this up. Uh, this is Professor Nurit Paled El Hanan. I apologize if I'm butchering that. We're only going to watch a little bit of it. We're not going to watch anywhere near the 25 minutes, but um, uh, it's from Robert Martin. Shout out to Robert Martin. Uh, it's an explosive interview where she discusses the racist Israeli educational system that borders on child abuse. So let's uh, Don't teach hate. Let's uh, give this a watch. Maybe it just happened, but also I continually hear that the Palestinians teach hate and the Israelis teach peace. Not really. <laughs> so tell me, tell me about uh, your book and your study. First of all, the Palestinians don't teach hate because even if they wanted to, they couldn't have because they're so monitored, supervised and censored by Israel directly and indirectly. Oh. Uh, by World Bank, by the uh, European Union, by, and by the Israeli military, really, and by the Israeli Ministry of Education. So even if they wanted to, they couldn't have. Wow, you okay. See? Did you guys hear that? The curriculum of the Palestinians is so incredibly censored and overseen by the Zionists and uh, the international organizations that keep their mouths shut when the Zionists wage a genocide, that even if they wanted to preach hate, they literally couldn't. So even, even structurally, the lies that are constructed by the Zionist regime make no sense at all. There's no proof for any of them in the real world. So that's something we don't hear. We don't hear about that. You don't hear about that. No. Uh, I have a colleague, Samia Alayan, who is a specialist in that. So you can, you know, you can interview her as well. Okay. So even if they wanted to, they wouldn't. Have, they couldn't. I mean, they cannot do anything. They, they can hardly teach about their own history in their books. Yeah, so tell, tell me about that. So the, the, the Israeli government controls or has to sign off, doesn't it, on? No. Um, the U.S. is fucking going crazy about the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. First, it was a genocide. Then they brought it down to a cultural genocide. And then they just stopped speaking about it, except for the few uh, e extremists uh, who claim that they've been sent by God to destroy China. I know you all know who I am talking about. Um, so, you know, in China, the, the Uyghurs, they have their language on the currency. Uh, it's the most mosque dense uh, region of the world. They're allowed to. To study their history, you know what happens. What happens when you remove the history of a people? You basically destroy them as a people. You destroy them as a people. You make them a collective, almost like blank slate, um, and you can manipulate them. So they're trying here explicitly to destroy the ability of the Palestinian people to sustain a sense of national identity. It's very tragic, but none of the hysteria that we saw with the U.S. empire over China, over baseless things, is found here over people that are systematically doing those things which the U.S. erroneously says that China does, and that, of course, does uh, makes those claims in order to further uh, legitimate its uh, new Cold War against China. Um, the books of the Palestinian Authority, which are studied in the West Bank and Gaza, are financed by the World Bank, European European Union, and some European countries, okay. and they all monitor and, and uh, supervise and censor it. So it's indirectly through Israel. In East Jerusalem, uh, they still study the Palestinian uh, curriculum, but it is controlled by Israel. So um, um, they get a book where half of the pages are blank because they are erased, deleted, and yes. uh, they cannot teach anything about themselves. They can. You know what uh, historical regime had that level of censorship? did those sorts of things to books, blew up libraries as, as Israel recently did. It was a regime that had as one of its central icons, symbols, a, uh, a symbol that uh, some Buddhist currents also share. I think you know which one I am talking about. If you get two Zs and you turn them a certain way, you will find that symbol. Uh, but it's disgusting. And it's, you know, the, the, the phrase that a lot of people have used from the beginning of the 18th Brumaire, you know, all historical events and figures in history 
occur twice. First as tra tragedy and then as fa fa uh, farce. You know, the Holocaust was a, a tragedy, but they're farcically using it to perpetuate a tragedy that is en route to being, you know, very akin to the initial tragedy um, of the Holocaust. So, very sad. I think Islam until the 17th century, but nothing that has to do with nationality and with, with today. You say they cannot teach about the refugees. They cannot teach about the Nakba. And I'm talking about the Palestinian Authority, not in Israel. In Israel, the Palestinian students study the same curriculum as the Jews, translated to... Adrian Sands. Adrian Sands is the, uh, the guy that's been saying that God sent them. Uh, to, he's been sent by God to destroy China, and he's been the one fabricating a lot of the tabloid-like lies that uh, the empire circulates about China. To Arabic. Wow, so, that's... so they learn about the Zionist project and the redemption of the land and the wonderful project of settlement and occupation and this and that. They have maybe, uh, just yesterday, a student of mine told her, me that she saw her niece's books and they have about two pages about Palestinian uh, history and culture. Nothing. They don't know Mahmoud Arwish. Cool. But they do know Israeli poets. National, uh, they call national poets. So they're not, they're not even able to learn about their own things? Oh, no, no, no. Culture, no, they don't. Yeah. They don't. I have a um, course uh, where we teach um, Arab teachers of Hebrew. And many of them tell me, so what I do, I mean, there's no program for teaching that. I teach the translation theory. So I made a new program with a friend of mine who is uh, the greatest translator of Arabic. Okay. And, so we took, you know, articles and we took uh, works and so on. And the students say, and students are all teachers, and they say it's the first time I read Mahmoud Awish. It's the first time I read uh, this and that. So that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's One of them told me, I thought it was uh, the, the songs of Masal Khalifa. I didn't even know. You know? See, that's sad. So you can't even learn about yourself. And uh, so they, they don't learn anything about themselves. Of course, they cannot say anything bad about Israel. And um, so this is slander. Of course, outside the ministry, you have all kinds of groups that uh, publish all kinds of books, just like here, you know, you know about these rabbis who uh, who publish books that say you can rape enemy women and you should kill enemy babies. And these books are given to soldiers. They were given to soldiers just before they enter Gaza. So side, side, side. Boom, there you go. That's the same thing we just covered. It's the same thing we just covered. Fundamentalists uh, of the Torah uh, making claims that you can kill babies and rape women uh, and and giving those texts and influencing with those ideas the soldiers. Again, because that's really important. So, so they yeah, rabbis in Israel who wrote a few books, one called it The King's Road and the other I don't remember, where they say it's, according to Jewish halacha, you can rape enemy women and you can kill enemy babies. And this book... Uh, there was a trial, and the rabbi he didn't get to jail, but you know, something. And um, he's free now, and he still teaches. And he's a rabbi. Not only one, a few. And their books were distributed to soldiers before getting into Gaza. You, I mean, uh, but this is not the Ministry of Education, so you cannot not see these are textbooks. Yeah. You know, everyone can publish whatever they want. But, but it's well known. But they are not punished. These people. This is what I'm saying. What was the Palestinian doing? Or that one, sort of thing? Or what? They are, they are punished for something they write on Facebook, or, and you know, they're in the tour and uh, yeah. you know, they start. Okay. Right. So they really cannot. They cannot even if they want to. Um, whenever you have the stamp of the Palestinian Ministry of Education, it is heavily censored. I don't think they want to teach hate. I mean, this is not a point for them. <laughs> you, see? you teach hate and you teach racism when you want to dehumanize people in order to control them, right? Or eliminate them or exterminate them. You don't do it when you want to be liberated. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not useful. Okay, Oof. So talking about that. Oof. Oof. That is on the money. You don't teach hate. You don't need to divide and, 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 and conquer and dehumanize and and lower the, the status of the humanity of other people when you're fighting for your freedom. You only do that when you have power and you're attempt, attempting to sustain it via uh, discriminating against a specific group in order to uh, proliferate divisions across the people so that it allows you to sustain power and reproduce the existing state of affairs more smoothly. It's not the oppressed that end up carrying these uh, uh, these these horrendous, disturbing ideologies uh, and, and and forms of racism. That the study that you did on the 
Palestine and Israeli school books. Yeah. And I think also the ideology and propaganda in education is a huge thing. This but, is not my idea. This is the, <laughs> the publisher's. Yeah, no, but, it, but it, it stands out of what it is. Yeah. So tell, tell, tell us about the, um, the study that you did. Because I think people need to realise that you're a professor. Yeah. You're highly educated. <laughs> and this isn't something that you just decided to do. It's something that sort of evolved. Is that yes, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. When I started my academic career, I wanted to study the whole, all the aspects of educational discourse. Language development in school, writing development, um, classroom dialogue, uh, multiculturalism, racism, and so on. I went yeah. from one to another. And then when I got to the racism, you know, I learned it racism in class because racism in Israel is Israeli discourse is a racist discourse, not only towards Palestinians, but towards Jewish minorities as well. So I studied that. And then I wanted to see how the books use scientific discourse in order to convey ideologies. There's a lot of study about that other places. And I started, and then I saw that the way they present Palestinians is, is the main issue. Um, so, you know, so I did that and that's how this book came about. Can now, tell, us, tell us about the book and the study. What did you find? Well, I find that uh, the books, if there was a racist manual to write books, they follow it by the letter. Okay? Wow. All the categories of wow. racist discourse are there, both visual and verbal and rhetorical, rhetoric. You see, because other people who study wow. Israeli school books do content analysis. And when you do content analysis, you don't study the rhetoric. So, for example, there was a big... Uh, a discussion about whether Israeli school books mentioned the Nakba or not, because uh, in an Israeli school book translated to Arabic, uh, it was not allowed to say the word Nakba or the Green Line or whatever. But they do, they do mention the Nakba. But what do they say about the Nakba? They say it was for the best. So they justify it. They legitimate it, a posteriori, you see, by the consequences. And uh, so content analysis is not enough. Say if you, you know, Nakba or not Nakba. Yes, there is a Nakba. But at the end of the chapter, they say that the Nakba enabled us to. Uh, uh, to create a Jewish state with a Jewish majority. And this was a miracle. This was the best thing we can do. Miracle. So they don't say it's how jolly they died, but the consequences mm. legitimate it. Okay? Yeah. We call it consequential explanation in semiotics. Okay. Mm. Again, just uh, reverberated imperialist narratives. The trail of tears is justified. It opened up the way for white civilization. And blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't want to play the whole thing. Uh, I... I I'd love if y'all can go and show some some support to um, the interviewer. This is a great uh, interview, and you know, just hand of uh, or a round of applause. You know, all praise uh, to Nurit Paled El Hanan. Uh, I'm very sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but it takes tremendous courage to speak this truth, to write about it, to to to, to publish books on it. Um, precisely because, as she said, there's people that just from a Facebook post are getting arrested, are getting persecuted, repressed. Um, so it takes tremendous courage. Uh, and, and uh, you know, she's working within that Socratic tradition uh, that is willing to put the truth and the commitment to the truth above anything else. You know, as you know, Socrates had various attempts to uh, not be killed. He could have spoken a little bit different at the trial. He could have defended himself in a, in a different form. Um, he could have escaped. You know, we have dialogues where, uh, I believe it's Crito, where um, Socrates uh, was approached by some of his friends. They bribed the guard. They had a ship waiting. He could have escaped. Um, and he didn't. He, he preferred to, to be committed to, to the truth, uh, regardless of the outcome. It was worse for him to belittle himself, to lower himself to accepting uh, an engagement with falsity uh, and survive, then die with a commitment to the truth. And that Socratic spirit of academic courage is beautiful to see. And I, I see that definitely in, in, in Nurit's uh, work. So um, make sure to check out the interview. I don't want to be uh, showing the whole interview as a reaction. I think that'd be unfair. I'd like you all to to go check it out um, on your own. So it's in it's in the chat if anyone is interested. All righty. Well, that's that. Uh, that was a 